What is that? Custom blocks and custom item models in my Minecraft? Let's see how to add those. All right, we found ourselves back in Blockbench once more. What is this? Well, yes, of course. So in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at custom block models and custom item models. Now, the interesting thing is that they are actually very easy to implement, but once again, sort of hard to master. There are some caveats that you will need to be aware of when adding, for example, the custom block models. The thing there is going to be the voxel shapes, but we're just going to go through. So if you have a custom block model in Blockbench, for example, right here, I have one, which is sort of sided, right? So if I were to rotate this around by 90 degrees, then it would look differently. So there's no symmetry there whatsoever. Now, the first thing that's very important is that every cube you have in here is grouped under the group voxel shapes. I've had the experience that you can have different groups below it as well, and that everything should just be called cube. This is kind of bad in terms of organization in this case. However, I have found that it doesn't work if you don't have that. And if you have that, then you can go to file and export, and then we're going to export the block slash item model. This is going to save as a JSON file. So I'm just going to save this and then I'm going to show you. Uh, and then what we can do is we can just take this JSON file that we've just saved and actually just import it as a block model. So this is going to be the Kaupen underscore altar. And I will quickly show you. So as you can see, this is now the block bench JSON file. And this can function as a completely normal block model JSON. Absolutely no issue whatsoever. It's going to work com immediately. Uh, the only thing that you might need to change are the textures here. So those simply point to the textures again. So I'm going to copy over the three textures that we need. Those are of course just brown, gray and red here. And then instead of just leaving it as is, we actually need to add our tutorial mod, mod ID or your mod ID in this case, and then also block because this of course, they are all in the block folder in the textures folder. And now they will point to the correct texture. The block model is actually already done. It's fine. Now, of course, we still need an actual block to uh, have in the world. That is the Cotton Altar. And then we're going to see some very interesting, well, let's say limitations that we have for the time being. So in our mod blocks, we're just going to copy over the Hyacinth for the sake of argument. And we're going to say Cotton underscore Altar. And this is, of course, the Cotton underscore Altar. And for the time being, this is going to be a normal just block totally fine. And this is going to have some properties, let's say from the let's actually say properties dot create and then we're going to say material dot iron. That's okay. Now the block is registered and we still need a block states JSON. So in our case, the block states for the time being is going to be just a normal block states. So we can simply copy over the amethyst block here, and then change this to cop and alter. So then of course, reference the Kaupen alter JSON right here in the block models file. And then the same thing goes for the item model. This one actually will even stay like this. So this is going to be the Kaupen alter as well. And this will simply point back to the Kaupen alter block model. And last but not least, let's also add a translation down here. So let's just duplicate this guy. And let's say Kaupen underscore alter. And then this is the Kaupen alter. There you go. And now let's see what the first limitation is. And then we're also going to see how to solve it. Well, firstly, let's uh, actually fix this. I don't know how that happened. Alter, alter, that's that's not quite right. And then let's also just so that we have everything done here correctly. Let's add the not solid one to the block here, as well as adding the render layer, the proper render layer. So let's just take the leaves here and add it at the very bottom. And this is going to be the Kaupen altar here, get cut out once again. And then we're going to see the first limitation and then also how to solve it. All right, we found this in Minecraft. And as you can see, the Kaupen altar has been added to the game. Now, what is very interesting is when I set it down, it you know, the, the borders here are definitely not quite right. And this is something we're going to take a look at in just a moment. But also what is very interesting, if I set it down here, it is always going to look in the same direction. So this part of the actual altar is always going to look north. So if I take a look at this, you can see that now I'm facing north. And this is basically 
what's going to happen every time. And then of course the border here is also not quite right. So if I can take a look at this, uh, you know, that, that doesn't quite look right. So there's two things that we need to fix. Number one is we actually need to add a direction property to this block as well as basically custom voxel shapes. And there's something very important to note there as well. Right, so let's start with the direction property. We actually need a custom block for this. So we're going to make a new Java class here. This is the Kaupen Alter block. And this is going to extend the horizontal block actually, because that has everything in it that we need, basically. We're just going to make a constructor matching super, and then we're going to say public. And if I middle mouse button click on the horizontal block, you can see that this has a horizontal facing property. This is a direction property. And the idea of this is basically that, well, when you think about it, the only thing that we really want is we want to rotate it based on where we are looking, right? So we always want the sort of small part to be looking in our direction, similar to how you know a furnace works. For example, this also has a particular front texture and that always looks towards you when you place it down. And that's basically the same thing that we want here. We only need two more things here. And this is just something that you should have. So one of them is the fill state container. And this is going to call a builder dot add horizontal facing. Now the reason why we have access to this horizontal facing property is of course because of the horizontal block. You can see this is a public static final direction property and we can of course use this inside of the subclass. And then we have another method. This is the get state for placement method, which is very particular. I'm going to copy over what we have to put in there and then I'm going to explain it. So the idea is that we're going to take the default state of this alter block and then we're going to say, okay, we're going to have the horizontal facing property set to whatever the placement is and then we're going to get the opposite. Basically the idea of that being I'm going to look in the north direction and then we want to have the opposite direction for this particular block state. It can seem kind of confusing for the time being but no worries this is sort of how we need to do this. Now in here of course we also need to make the Kalpen Alter block instead of just a new block. And then we also need to change the block states JSON, which is very important because now we actually have different variants. We've talked about this a few times. I'm going to once again copy over the contents and then I'm going to explain what is going on here. So the variants here are basically just facing. This should make sense if I go once again back to the horizontal block. This is actually called horizontal facing, but in the back end it is called facing. So we can take a look at the block state properties and then horizontal facing middle mouse button click and you can see that the name of the actual direction property is called facing. Therefore, it's going to look at facing and we have four different, well, possible values for it. East, north, south and west. North, of course, we can remember here was the normal one. So we don't need to rotate it at all. If the block is facing east, then we need to rotate it by 90 degrees south 180. That should make sense. And then west to 70. So that's sort of the general idea here. Making the block state JSON and having the block state properties can get even more complicated. Of course, we've seen something like that with the door, for example, which had, you know, four different block state properties, basically. And so this is still a fairly straightforward one. But for now, for the time being, this should work. So let's see if it does. All right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft and let's see. So if I place it down like this, this of course still works fine. So we're still looking to the north and then let's see. And there you go. It basically rotates based on where I look. So it always faces into the right direction. So that's actually really nice and really cool. And now the last thing that we want to add is a custom bounding box. This is what is referred to as a voxel shape. So let's see how to do that. So the voxel shape can also be exported from Blockbench. This is why I had you put all of your cubes under the voxel shapes folder here or the group rather. What you need for that is you actually need a particular plugin that is going to be the mod utils plugin. You simply can go to available and type in mod utils. I of course now can't find it because I've already installed it, but you should find the mod utils plugin from JTK222 and wither here. And you just install that and then you will get the export voxel shapes option right here. And if I do this, first of all, I have to state the particular mappings that we're using. We are using the MCP mappings. 
So we're going to choose MCP. If you are using the Mojang mappings, of course, you need to choose those. And if you are for whatever reason here and you are actually using Fabric, I don't know why you're here, but welcome, I guess. Um, then, of course, I don't know why you're watching the Forge tutorial, but fair enough, I guess. And then you choose Yarn. But in our case, MCP. And then we say Confirm. And then it's going to open here. Basically being able to save this and we're going to save this as voxel shape underscore n. There's a particular reason for this and this is actually going to save this as a Java file. Now I'll open this Java file in Notepad for, a time, for the time being and I'm going to show you this. So this is how it looks like at the moment. You can see that this is an interesting thing, right? So this is basically how the voxel shape would look like. You need to take this one, copy it, so control C, and then we're going to go back into IntelliJ. We're going to go into the Kaupen Altar block. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new field here. And that field is going to be a private static final voxel shape from NetMinecraft Util Math Shapes called shape underscore n. And this is equal to what we've just copied. So now we can do control V. And in theory, we only need to import all of those classes. So stream voxel shapes and then the I boolean function or and then it should work totally fine. As long as you've chosen the correct mappings, this should work now. What you will notice is that, well, why, why would we need the shape N? Well, once again, here the issue comes in that we actually need to do this for all four sides because our block, if we take a look at this, if we were to rotate it by 90 degrees, what you can do is you can select the voxel shapes here, make sure that to center the pivot and then rotate the Y axis by 90 degrees you can see that, you know, this would be a different shape here, right? We have to export this again, and then we have to rotate it again, and export again, and rotate again, and export again. And then we're back here, and then it's fine. If you have a symmetrical one, so for example, if we had something like this, where this is sort of symmetrical, then we only would need to, of course, export two of those, but that's not our case. We actually have to export four of them, so this can be kind of annoying, especially if you have a lot of different custom block shapes. And there's one more thing that I wanted to mention here before we export the other ones. And that is that you don't have to have the exact voxel shapes in here. So this voxel shape for this particular block here is still fairly straightforward and not too crazy. If you have something in your in your block model, which is not perfectly cube. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, you have a cube in here, right, something like this. And then you rotate it around um, something like this, right? With this, the voxel shape would be absolutely insane, because there's a lot of calculations that go in there, which are not like perfect blocks. So you're gonna have insane, like, floating point numbers with like 0.86523. And that basically for all of your different shapes, Therefore, uh, I really recommend if you have something like this in your, you know, custom block, then make sure to not export the voxel shapes perfectly, but try to estimate the voxel shapes. So the idea is that you can actually think of the voxel shapes in a very particular way. If I were to take a look at this from the top here, right? So you can actually count from here just for the sake of argument. So 0, 0, this is 0, 0, this is 1, 1. 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. So this starts at 4, 4. And if we actually take a look at the voxel shape again, right, so you can actually count, right, so this would be 0, 0. So this is 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. And this then ends at, if we take a look at this, so this is this would be 16, 16. This is 15, 15, 14, 14, 13, 13, 12, 12. So somewhere in there, somewhere in this one, we should get a 4, 4, and a 12, 12. Now, so as you can see right here, this is the shape for the bottom layer. So this is four, four, and it ends at 12, 12, one. This is really annoying and can actually take a lot of time. However, if you have insanely complex voxel shapes, the game is going to slow down drastically if, if you have them basically match perfectly. And also you don't really need it because whether or not the player collides with this perfectly or just a little bit offset, doesn't really matter in that case. So if you have very complex custom block models, then please try to do that. Well, in our case, this is basically constituted of normal blocks. We will actually export the voxel shapes here for each side. So this would be west, and then we rotate it around again. 
and then export or underscore south and then rotate again and then this is export underscore east and we simply take each of those and add them into our block class the finished version of course is also available for you in the description below either in the github repository or in individual gists as well and then last but not least we need one more method here actually and that is going to be the get shapes method and that is not those but this one get shape with the block state the i block reader block pass and the context here and what we want to do is we want a switch statement it's going to get the directional property of this state and then we can have a case north which is going to simply return shape shape underscore n you might see where this is going so we simply have the other cases as well so this is going to be south and this is then going to return shape s and we're going to have the west case which is going to have w and then we have the east case which is going to return e also have the default case which is simply going to return shape n just in case and this is going to be fine if you run into any issues with the voxel shape being sort of offset or something like that then make sure that you actually exported the correct voxel shape and have assigned it correctly because sometimes you know people might get confused with east and west you know it, it happens once again let's see if it works all right we found ourselves back in minecraft once more and if i now hover over the kaupen altar you can see the voxel shapes matches perfectly and it does in every direction as you can see so it doesn't matter which way the block is facing it's always going to match the voxel shape perfectly and i can even stand on it you know the little ledge at the end here is even making me one sixteenth of a block higher so that's pretty cool and just so that we have talked about it we also have an item model here so this in this case has a little bit of an issue with the textures no worries there this sometimes happens if you import the thing back into block bench it just sometimes is what it is and you can basically just export block slash item model this will also be a json file which you can simply use as an item model so we're just going to take the kalpen bow and we're going to make a kalpen staff out of this so this is going to be the kalpen underscore staff and this is going to be just a normal item for the time being and then we simply add the count staff json file to the item model now all credits go to a nitron cat for making this really cool looking staff let's also add the translation here so this is the kalpen underscore staff and this is going to be the count staff right here let's see the item model work as well right there you can see the count staff and if i take it into my hand you can see it looks really freaking cool if i do say so myself now once again i didn't make it this was done by nitron cat i have linked their channel in the description below so do send them some love you know i made my own staff in the live stream and then nitron cat came in and was like hey i can do a better staff and i was like let's see it and there it is right and that would be it for the custom block and item models tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did i would of course appreciate the like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one so yeah 